Hi, folks. So last week we talked about the 12 links in terms of their teaching order and the order of the image. We also talked about different groupings of them and where the junctures were to break the patterns. So it's so important for us to understand how these are our everyday lived experience. These are our habit patterns internally and their expression externally. We can think in terms of past and future lives, and that is where the teaching comes from. But you can also think about these cycles in terms of one life, one day, one moment in many ways. And so we're going to go a little bit more deeply today and look at the actualized and actualized factors, the projecting and projected. So this is a different arrangement of those same 12 links. It's the same 12 links, but it's explaining them in terms of the experience of them over several lives. Because we don't want to suffer in the future, because we don't want to hurt each other in the future, we look at why it is these patterns come about and how they're perpetuated. And hopefully by learning that very deeply, we reverse the process or break the wheel. So we'll start with a brief review going through the traditional order, and then we'll shift to looking at this different arrangement of actualized, actualizing, projected, and projecting. Briefly, what is projecting or launching a rebirth is a set of ignorance karmic formations in the first half of consciousness. Then the actualizing factors craving, grasping, becoming, are what nourish and ripen the seeds from that projecting set. Then what is actualized is birth or rebirth, together with resultant consciousness, name and form, six sources, contact and feeling, the projected factors. That projected set remains until actualized death, at which point a different set of projecting ignorance, karmic formations, and causal consciousness are nourished by craving, grasping, etc. We'll circle back to this, but first, let's review. In the Wheel of Life, the twelve links are depicted in the outer ring. We start with ignorance. To a blind person, the objects around them appear differently than they do to someone who has full use of their sight faculty. In the same way, our innate ignorance blinds us to reality. The link of ignorance is specifically related to not seeing the self clearly, and on that basis, many problems arise. Which naturally leads us to karmic formations. As a potter makes various sized pots, so too we make actions of various degrees of weight and lightness based on how strong our intention and follow-through is. Our creations are then placed on the mental consciousness. Depicted as a monkey, which is very representative of our monkey mind that's always swinging from one thing to another, chasing, etc. With that consciousness is name and form, which are the five aggregates. And this is depicted as a ship with people. The body is like the ship or form, and the people, the different aggregates or different moving pieces that are continuously within the mind or of the mind. As the fetus develops in the womb, in the case of a human birth, the six sources become manifest, and this is like an empty house with many windows, the windows representing the sense powers and the ability to access the outside world once the formation of the body is complete. So it's this gateway, if you will, between the mental consciousnesses accessing the sensory experiences of the outside world. And as that ripens, we have the ability for contact, depicted as a couple in union. And this is where the outside and the inside world can meet.
giving rise to then feeling, which is depicted as a man with an arrow in his eye because of the dramatic experience of feeling in our life. You could not ignore it, just as you cannot ignore an arrow if it were in your eye. And of course, feeling applies to pleasant feelings, not just painful ones, but regardless of what type of feelings, they are that large an experience that we can't ignore them. From feeling, we get craving, depicted as a person with alcohol, and we crave for more of what we like, and we crave to be separated from what we don't like. And just like someone who is an alcoholic, we're relying on the outside world to give what we need or separate us from what we think we don't need. Craving then escalates into a more extreme form, which is grasping which is depicted as either a human or a monkey grabbing at fruit. That determination and single focus that I must get these outside things, they are what I need, even though all of that is an illusion. And craving and grasping nourish those past karmic seeds into becoming, potential or renewed existence, which is depicted by a pregnant woman who is standing ready to give birth in the traditional way. which naturally leads to birth, meaning rebirth. In the case of a human being, the meeting of sperm, ovum, and consciousness. This is depicted by a woman physically giving birth, even though it relates to, mo to a time before then. And last comes old age and death, which is depicted by an old person carrying a corpse on their back. So the 12 links are presented in a specific order in order to understand what each one means. Now they're being presented in terms of the way they're actually actualized. Projecting is ignorance, karmic formations, and the first part of consciousness, causal consciousness. As it says in the Lam Rim Chanmo by Lama Tsongkhapa, projecting and being projected should be understood by way of four considerations. One, what has been projected? The four and a half factors, beginning with resultant period consciousness and ending with feeling, have been projected. Two, what has done the projecting? Compositional activity, which is dependent on ignorance, has done the projecting. Compositional activity is also called karmic formations. Three, how has projection occurred? Projection has occurred by means of latent karmic propensities being infused in the causal period consciousness. Four, projected means having created the effects, resultant period consciousness, name and form, sources, contact and feeling, conducive to actualization once the actualizers, such as craving, are present. So we've discussed these three projecting factors, ignorance, karmic formations, and causal consciousness, as well as resultant consciousness. Name and form refer to the five aggregates, form, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, primary consciousness. The six sources refer to the six sense powers, the subtle form for our minds to work in. Contact, meeting of object, sense power, and consciousness. Feeling, 
mental or physical experience of pleasant, unpleasant, or neutrality. The actualizers and the actualized should be understood by way of three considerations. One, what does the actualizing? It is done by grasping, which is caused by craving. Two, what is actualized? Birth and aging and death are actualized. Three, how does actualization occur? Actualization occurs by means of the empowerment of the latent karmic propensities that were infused in consciousness by compositional activity. Actualizing factors. Link number eight, craving. Attachment, wanting to have and keep pleasure objects and to be separated from aversion objects. Grasping escalated desirous attachment, wanting to have and keep pleasure objects and to be separated from aversion objects that are now repulsive. These two are the ripening agents of past karmic seeds to quote, become or project a new lifetime. Link 10 is becoming, also known as potential existence or renewed existence. This is karma becoming rebirth. And then what is actualized is birth. This is rebirth. For humans, it's the moment of conception. Sperm, egg, and consciousness meeting. Then 12, aging and death. Aging begins the second moment after conception to death. Summary of the 12 links of dependent arising. Extract from Calm Abiding and Spiritual Insight. Pages 203 to 207 by Geshe Gendon Ludro, translated and edited by Jeffrey Hopkins. Let us take an example. If someone newly accumulates an impelling action, motivated by ignorance, that would bring about rebirth as a human, which of the twelve links are included in the present life? Ignorance is actualized. And in the next moment, actions, karmic formations, is actualized. When that action is approaching cessation, consciousness is actualized. At this point, two and one half links have been actualized, and the action has become of one entity with consciousness. In order for this action, which is to impel rebirth as a human, to actually cause rebirth as a human, three other links, the 8th, ninth, and 10th must be actualized when the person is about to die. The attachment involved here is taking pleasure in rebirth, in the very next moment, without any further exertion. This attachment becomes grasping, an actual exertion of effort toward taking rebirth. Once the potency has been nurtured by this attachment and grasping, it becomes strong, much as a seed nurtured by water becomes able to grow. This strengthened state is what is meant by existence, becoming, potential or renewed existence. It would be a great mistake to think that the tenth link, existence, is signified something new, for this potency has existed since the time of the third link, consciousness. Now, nurtured by the eighth and ninth links, it has the power to ripen into an effect. After the person dies, the eleventh link, birth, is actualized when he or she takes a rebirth. The fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh link, either name or form, sense spheres and sources, contact, and feeling, are also simultaneously actualized at birth. In the next moment, the twelfth link, either aging or death, is actualized. The consciousness at the time of the effect is also actualized simultaneously with the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh links at the time of birth. This consciousness is known as cause consciousness before rebirth and as an effect consciousness after rebirth. 
The former case is a case of abiding as a latency, because it ripens and attains the power to bring about its effect at the time of the tenth link existence. It is then no longer a cause, but an effect consciousness. It is important not to mistake the word existence that refers to the tenth link with the more common meaning of the word, namely cyclic existence. Cyclic existence is a name that applies to all true sufferings and true origins of suffering. The existence, which is the tenth link of dependent arising, refers specifically to a latency that has become qualified by the ability to bring about its effect. This explanation has been from the viewpoint of the twelve links being complete in two lifetimes. The first lifetime was the time of accumulating the action, the first, second, half of the third, and the eighth, ninth, and tenth links are all established in relation to the support that does the accumulation. The others are all established in the subsequent lifetime. The twelve can also be completed in three lifetimes. As before, an action motivated by ignorance is done, actualizing the cause consciousness. This is not different from above. If the lifetime immediately following is not impelled by that particular action, it is possible for an eon or more to intervene before the rebirth impelled by that action occurs. There is no certainty of the amount of time here. Let us say that five lives intervene between the commission of an action and the taking of a rebirth impelled by it. If the sixth life is to be taken up through that action, then at the end of the fifth life, as that person is about to die, the eighth, ninth, and tenth links of dependent arising related to that particular action will become manifest. The taking of rebirth in the sixth life will be the eleventh link birth, the way the others are actualized as before. The five intervening rebirths are the results of actions other than the one which gives rise to the sixth rebirth. They constitute different series of dependent arisings. It might happen that a hundred thousand years intervene between a certain action and the rebirth that results from it. People have amassed countless actions. No matter how long the process takes, the twelve links are completed over three lifetimes. At the very least, they will be completed within two lifetimes. Question. Can they ever be completed in one lifetime? Answer. No, because one will take rebirth through the power of that action, and taking rebirth involves a new life. This ordering of the twelve links of dependent arising is how they are presented in the text and in Sutra. As I have explained, their order of actualization is that the first three, ignorance, action, and the cause, arise. Then attachment, grasping, and existence. And finally, there is the simultaneous arising of birth, effect consciousness, name and or form, sense fears, contact, feeling, which are immediately followed by aging and or death. When the twelve links are complete in three lifetimes, ignorance, action, and the cause consciousness are known as the two and one-half projectors. The eighth, ninth, and tenth links are called the three actualizing causes. The rest are known as the six and one-half projected effects. This has been a general explanation. There is no case in which, when the three actualizing causes, attachment, grasping, and existence arise, another life intervenes between them and the rebirth that they actualize. Generally speaking, it is impossible not to take a rebirth once these three have become manifest. However, according to a Sangha's summary of manifest knowledge, there can be exceptions. It is possible for the eighth, ninth, and tenth links to be actualized, and for the person to die and enter the intermediate state without having to take rebirth. 
In general, the second and tenth links, actions and existence, are different. But if one commits a very strong virtuous or non-virtuous action, it immediately becomes the nature of the tenth link. I've explained a little about how the twelve links of dependent arising are actualized, because this is one of the topics in which one may become skilled. Buddha first set for the Sutra on Dependent Arising in the country of Magadha, using a certain rice seedling as an example, and speaking about how it grows. Nagarjuna wrote a commentary on this, as did Vasubandhu. Many of these teachings were set forth in the Sutra of Teaching to Nanda on Entry to the Womb. That was an excerpt from pages 203 to 207 from Calm Abiding and Special Insight by Geshe Gendon Ludru, translated and edited by Jeffrey Hopkins. Now we'll look at this whole actualization, actualized, projecting, and projected situation by means of an allegory. So imagine that there's a man named Adam, and he works for a big corporation and he's involved with finance. And he hates his boss, and he doesn't have respect for the corporation, and he wants to embezzle. He wants to steal money. And so he's motivated maybe initially by some anger, but really by the attachment that thinks, I need and deserve this extra money. I have entitlement to it, even though it doesn't belong to me. So he plans, he actually does the stealing or embezzlement, and then he's happy about it. He feels he has a right to it. So he's created a complete karma. It's strong enough to project a whole rebirth experience, as well as causally concordant effects and effects similar to the cause, environmental effects, etc. when later he's a human again. Throughout Adam's life, he probably does stuff like this again and again and again, planting many, many karmic seeds of this type, none of which he purifies because he doesn't regret it. And just like everyone, he has plenty of good karma in his past and is probably creating some good karma in the present. So he has happiness. And maybe he even gets away with his mistake. And maybe he even dies happy having done it. No regret whatsoever. So he dies and his mind of attachment is quite manifest. I stole these things and now I'm so happy to have done it. I'll give them to my children. I'll leave a legacy of this money. And also I'm delighted to have gotten away with it. So there's some sort of kind generosity wanting to pay it forward to his kids and some strong attachment thinking it was his to take in the first place. And all of those are very strong conditions for old negative karma to ripen at the time of death and project a rebirth in a lower realm. So say he dies with that mind, he's in the bardo with that mind, and he's reborn as a hungry ghost. And in the hungry ghost realm, he has this mind of greed and attachment, seeking refuge, seeking safety, and seeking food and resources constantly, and very difficult to find them. Sometimes he finds resources and then they won't digest. Sometimes he finds resources and they make him sick. And maybe every once in a while he finds resources that are healthy for him, but it just is never enough. So that depiction of hungry ghost beings with very, very tiny throats and huge, huge empty bellies, it's never enough. So basically, it's a whole life of feeling deprived as the result of having taken what wasn't freely offered. And so Adam is now in this hungry ghost realm, and his life is pretty much suffering. He maybe has moments of happiness and connection with other hungry ghosts. Maybe he has access to some sort of teachings here and there. The hungry ghost realm is really varied. But eventually, that negative karma exhausts itself. And he, you know, the karma that projected his rebirth in the hungry ghost realm finishes. And then he, in his deathbed as a hungry ghost, 
it's possible that he has a mind of regret, having seen that taking what wasn't freely offered was unethical, was the wrong thing to do, and led to rebirth in the lower realm. And so he has a mind of regret, and that generates conditions for positive karma to ripen as a positive rebirth. Or alternatively, he's so filled with rage and disappointment and resentment that another negative karmic seed ripens at the time of death, and he goes to an even lower realm, like a hell realm. So it's not like it's a tidy evolution. What happens at the time of death is not the substantial cause for your future rebirth, but it germinates or ripens previous causes that do become the cause for your rebirth. So the time of death is crucial in Buddhism, which is why we talk about it so often, because we all have positive karma that could project fortunate rebirths and negative karma, which could project really unfortunate rebirths. And we know how hard it is to practice when we're suffering. So we need positive karma to ripen at the time of death. Back to the presentation of how the links interact over various lives, as well as breaking the links whenever we can. So let's start at number 3B. Resultant consciousness from a brand new birth. And this brand new birth at resultant consciousness has name and form, the five aggregates, six sources, which are the sense powers, the subtle form for the mind to work in, which can give the ability for contact once the fetus is developed enough, as in the case of a human. And as soon as there is contact, the meeting of object, sense power, and consciousness, we have feeling, mental or physical experiences of pleasant, unpleasant, or neutrality. And feeling is, of course, very conditioned by karma of many types, not just the karmic formations, which are part of the projecting links. So you live your life, and you have actualized aging, but not yet death. So what's happening right now is basically number 12, part 1, and number 7. You're aging and you're feeling. And while you're aging and you're feeling, you're creating many sets of projecting links, ignorance, karmic formation, causal consciousnesses. These are all being placed on your mental continuum again and again throughout a life, very much related to feeling. You respond in different ways, not realizing that your current feelings are from past karma. And of course, you're having, generally speaking, craving and grasping, but we're not having the specific type of craving and grasping described in the 12 links until the moment of death. And at the moment of death, 12 part B, then we have the craving and grasping that are significant for this cycle. They're significant because they are what waters one of your old sets of projecting factors. So some old set of ignorance, karmic formations, and causal consciousness get germinated by craving and grasping, which are the ripening agents to become a new lifetime. And you get the factor of becoming, which is that old karma becoming a new rebirth. And then birth is actualized, which is really indicating rebirth. For humans, this is the moment of conception. And aging begins the second moment after conception, leading to death. One more time. Life A, projecting factors are created together as a set. Ignorance leads to karmic formations. The seed is placed on the causal consciousness. A set of those projecting factors gets ripened by the actualizing factors. Craving escalates into grasping which ripens the previously created karmic seeds, which lead to becoming, also known as potential or renewed existence. This is karma becoming rebirth. And so becoming, which is an actualizing agent, continues our existence in another form, or in life B. And what is actualized is birth, and together with birth, these factors are projected. 
3B resultant consciousness, name and form, six sources, contact, feeling. Feeling continues throughout the life, including throughout the link of 12, aging and death. Actualized 12A is aging throughout the life bundles of ignorance leading to karmic formations, the seeds of which are placed on the causal consciousness. And then, at death, 12b, 7, feeling leads to the actualizing links. And so on and so on until remedies are applied. So the projecting factors are almost always a set from a previous life. And we only experience a set that we've created in life A directly in life B without any intervening lives if it's an incredibly strong positive or an extremely strong negative karma. Otherwise, any number of seeds could be the one to make our next rebirth. So as you look at this chart, it looks, of course, very repetitive, and that's the whole point. So just have a look, and I won't say anything for a minute, and just really look and see if you can get your head around it. And as you look at this chart, go ahead and write down any ideas or questions so that we can talk about it next week. So the wheel keeps going around and around, and different wheels pass through other wheels, and it's all completely endless, unless. And that's the big question, unless. So really sit with, what are those junctures that you have opportunities to change? Or societally, what opportunities do we have when there's a big shift in the way people think about certain things, where actually we could stop doing certain damaging behaviors? So the main thing to remember for us, whether we believe in past and future lives or not, is where to break our negative habitual patterns. Where are there chances for choice and change? So reviewing from last week, just remembering those highlighted sections. In between suffering and afflictions, there's a chance. Between an affliction turning into negative karma, there's a chance. And between negative karma turning into suffering again, there's a chance. All of those chances are choices we need to be ready to make. Otherwise, this is all just endless.